Hunter X Hunter episode 45, Restraint X and X Vow. Chain jail will tsukai. Ubogo pulled a miracle with the chain jail. But what's the plan now? Just keep driving. Just keep driving. Use your your kyo. Kyo. Yeah, there's a thread. <laughs> He's so cheerful. Always. It's funny, like, the Phantom Troop, for all we know about them and how evil they are and all, what they did to Kurapika's people, and the fact that they're just straight up thieves and murderers, the show's giving them, like, very nice treatment. They're, they're like friends. They're a crew of friends. It's complex, and I love it. It's just like a buddy, <laughs> buddy picture <laughs> on the road with the Phantom Troop. Fun, fun cloth. Convenient magic kerchief. Whoa. Oh, that. Okay, that's the thief. Or that's the person who took all the, the loot. Oh, they're still alive, just mini. I thought they'd be smushed. Similar to you with your vacuum cleaner. Right. He's a beast. Shadow Beast. Probably quick to die, is my guess, based on what happened with Ubogin. We've come to scratch you and implant eggs in your bladders, etc. We are here to inflict minor irritating damage on you as you earthquake us into oblivion, annihilate our eardrums, and god knows what other horrors. Come on, Shadow Beasts, do something. <laughs> I got numbers this time at least, but Ubogin took out... Three of them, four of them, by himself. I too once underestimated the Phantom Troop. You will learn about Kuripika, I'm sure, in time. Alright, Charl, I gotta remember Shalnark, stop calling him Armin. Gee, I wonder which animal that flying one is. wonder what his name is. Get the man some beer, though. Be have some mercy. Murder him if you want, but for God's sakes, help him regulate his urine pH. Wow, they didn't even get an intro introduction. Whoa, that's shocking. They did that off screen? The buddy romp continues. I've been joking about Kurapika becoming a gang leader. Is it weird that I can see Gon fitting right in with the Phantom Troop in a way? There's a similar vibe. Someone like gag him at least. I can't explain it, but I was oddly disturbed by his shouting power. Oh, they choked him out. That's good. I think he's thinking about the eggs in his bladder. I know I am. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about it. Man, even harnessed. Did you not, like, watch what happened? He's kind of the man. You gotta give it to him. I mean, speaking of Gon, one of the most exciting things about Uvogin is knowing he's the same type, and that, like, I hadn't even imagined the upper limit of Gon's power, and, like, what the body enhancement and healing boost and physical power actually meant. One of the things I like about Uvogin, thinking about his, his fight episodes, I think somewhat true to, to Nen form, and what we've seen already, as Kurapika's alluding to also, the skill matches the, the spirit and the energy. What I think made his fight against the Shadow Beast so cool, the raw physical strength is a big part of it, but it's also, like, just the refusal to be beaten, and the ingenuity that came from just not quitting, not relenting. So like, he's trapped and he just bites off Leech's face. It's such a cool one-to-one -one from the feeling you get from him and what you see from him. From observation, I think that that power of will thing is a real multiplier on physical ability and strength. You do see people who appear to be at a physical advantage dominate because of something like a relentlessness in their approach. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> what? Wow, yeah, speaking of relentlessness. Yes, in like the best way. <sighs> like, make sure there's nothing in his mouth. He can like break off his own tooth and use it as a bullet. <laughs> Which is very odd. I don't think Uvagin bluffs. <laughs> I don't think he knows what bluff means. So worried about Melody. They're in a vacuum. So you you did that Oh, Nah, it's just wasted on deaf ears. He doesn't care. Uh oh. What's the deal with his stomach? He's got another. He's, he's got. He's crafty. He's got something going on. I don't know what it is. He's gonna shoot his stomach out of his mouth and shatter someone's face. Leech egg urine blast. The ultimate attack. Ah. He's the saltiest member. Okay. Bye. Bye. Not exactly sure still where to place Ahsoka, but the feeling is that he's right there with them. We've never really tested his upper limits, but the way they respect him and let him come and go as he pleases, you figure he's gotta be up there somewhere, right? Just the fact that he can roll with them. I can sense that you're agitated <laughs> with my super hearing. Damn, just Melody's face was calming. I can sense that you- <laughs> What was that? I can sense that you got a text message with my superior hearing. Amazingly. Off screen, weren't even worth showing. <laughs> Jiri is always murdering people. Oh no, oh, I'm worried about Melody. This is Hisoka's house. <laughs> it looks like a fitting place for him. Isoka just lives in the Silent Hill 3 amusement park. Yeah, I mean, that's what makes me feel confident in Rupika's safety. He's not ready yet. There will be nothing idle about this chat. What? <laughs> I didn't. What kind of philanthropic work do they do? Who are the bad guys here exactly? Why am I getting attached to the Phantom Troop members? Why does Ahsoka want anything? There it is. He's very open about it. Yeah, and this is the, the motivation. Kurpika, really in deep here. Hisoka being Hisoka though, and being the, the genius that he is, the fact that he's offering this means that he's 10 steps ahead of Kurapika, who is totally expendable. As Kurapika, you can only trust that Hisoka will tell you what he thinks will benefit Hisoka, and nothing more. It's a really fun arc for Kurapika to watch him slip farther and farther into this dark world, partly because of my impressions of him early in the show, where he was one of the, the most honorable, it seemed, and upstanding. And you know that's in there, right? You know that's still him, but desire sort of wins out. There's a major part of this that's just compulsion. It also feels like there's some truth in the fact that it's happening so gradually. You wonder how people end up in these terrible situations or just, you know, ultra dark worlds. If I had to guess, I'd say rarely does anyone start in the ultimate depths. It, it happens gradually as a series of minor concessions. As you move in any direction, you're 
your baseline updates to that position. So like you cross a tiny line that quickly becomes your baseline for your standards, both up and down. So like the next rung down is closer. So it's not as much of a transgression as it would have been before the first transgression. This is sometimes the seriousness of what otherwise seem like trivial choices. Like it's not a big deal if this time I cut a corner or do something I don't really want to do or feel as good. It ends up stacking. <laughs> Yeah, whoops. Let him right in. Uvukin is never going to hear the end of this. More importantly, where's Frankie with the beer? Like paper. Yeah, I'm with them on this one. Melody, run! Melody's like, I sense there's someone angry in the next room. Uvugin is not one to duck for doors. Off screen. <laughs> now the boss seems pretty chill about their comings and goings. Ooh, maybe it's gonna be an encounter with Kurupika and Hisoka. I think I did say at one point in a recent episode, I think Kurapika's best shot here is Ahsoka, which is crazy. It's so crazy and it's so fun. Ahsoka is the ace in the deck. Gone. Hulu, what the heck? <laughs> they have a really bad habit of introducing these characters after they're dead. I guess it's not totally their fault. Like, these characters are not lasting long. Against the Phantom Troop, the latter six Shadow Beasts didn't even have time to say their animals. Some are obvious like that, but some of them will just never know, I guess. Who knows what kind of mildly irritating damage they may have inflicted. Back to Hisoka, maybe I'm getting this wrong. It feels like he has been planning this out exactly as it's gone for quite some time. For someone who's so hedonistic, let's say, the man has a really admirable level of patience and follow through. Though I would guess that someone like that would argue the patience is a part of the, the hedonistic pleasure. These episodes are really interesting because they're they're great without going in Kalua, which, you know, for a long time has sort of been what carried the show for me, largely because of the intense focus on them. Them exclusively in the previous arc. This episode made me really appreciate more what they're building here, because now you have Uvugin, who, man, has he been established, hunting Kurapika, who's kind of lost, and teaming up with Hisoka, speaking of extremely well-established. It's just bizarre and thrilling.